Hello everyone and welcome to another Picky Board Gamers episode. My name is Exarakos and Rebel Studio is back with another great expansion of Meadow, the adventure book. This is again designed by Clemens Kalecki and has the great artwork by Karolina Kijak which we already know from previous Meadow games. This big expansion brings us six new scenarios included in this great cardboard book that can be played as standalone games or combined into a campaign mode. The game is normally for two to four players, but every scenario and also the campaign can be played in solo mode. Let's move on with the video in which I will explain every new feature and every rule regarding all these six new scenarios. Let's start. Fellow hikers, welcome to Meadow Adventure Book Expansion. This big meadow expansion introduces six new hike scenarios that can be played individually or combined as a campaign, the hiking mode. The major addition of this expansion is the adventure book. In its pages, we will discover the beautiful environment of six new hikes. The beginning, bridges, windmills, balloons, the observation tower, and the final destination, the cave. Every hike scenario is unique as it introduces new gameplay mechanics, new actions and special scoring opportunities. In this video we will learn together how we can use all these amazing new features offered in Meadow Adventure Book. To play Meadow Adventure Book a copy of Meadow base game is required and make sure that you also include the cards and gold token of Envelope U Big Encounters which is also found in your base game box. Meadow Downstream cannot be combined with Meadow Adventure Book, but cards found in this new expansion may be used when you play the basic game alone or with the Downstream expansion. Each of the six hikes is played using special and unique components. After you assemble the six hike component boxes, place all corresponding components by checking the symbols on the punch boards. Then you have the Adventure Book and Notch Tokens which are used in all hikes. To play a hike you need to go to the book's page corresponding to the hike and then attach the Notch Tokens depending on the number of players in the game. You attach the big token in a one or two players game, in a three players game you also add one small token and in a full four players game you attach all of them. The Adventure Book replaces entirely the campfire board we know from the base game. The Notch Tokens provide new Path Token locations for the players. Also, there are four additional player markers that are used in specific hikes. As we said, each hike can be played as an individual scenario and the winner will be the player that accumulates the highest victory point score. In addition to that, players can play the game in hiking mode. In hiking mode, players will play all six hikes in no particular order. This mode introduces a star scoring system that will determine the winner of the whole campaign. The winner of each hike collects two stars and the second player one star. In addition to that, each hike offers special achievement objectives in order to collect additional stars. Stars of each hike are tracked in this achievement sheet. At the end of the campaign, the player that collected the most stars shall be the winner of the campaign. Hike 1 Beginning In the first hike, players observe the sky and interact with the weather elements. In all hikes, you start by following steps 1 to 4 of the base game setup. This involves setting up the main board. Open the adventure book to the appropriate page, add the appropriate notches tokens and place the round marker in the leftmost umbrella space. Shuffle all gold tokens from the base game and randomly fill all of these spaces on the book. Remaining tokens will not be used. Divide the weather cards to sunny and rainy cards, shuffle each deck and place the decks next to the book. Sunny cards on the left, rainy cards on the right. Then place two cards from each deck on the designated spaces on the book, facing upwards. Place weather tokens in player colors in the starting spaces of sun and rain tracks. Place the weather indicators, the die and the various special tokens next to the book. All players take all normal player components from the base game. In this hike, players get an additional 5 value bonus token. The player last soaked by rain gains the first player token and will start the game. 
At the start of every round, you roll the die to determine the position of the two weather tokens on the main board. You make one roll for the sun token first and place it as indicated by this diagram on the book. For example, with this result, I should place the token in this notch. Then you repeat the process for the rain token. Important, if you get the same result, you must re-roll until you get a different one. Players can also place their path tokens in these spaces. When players gain a card from a column or a row with a weather token, by any means, they also gain one move in the corresponding weather track on the book. So if I got this card, I would gain one move on my marker on the rain track. And if I got this card, I would gain a move on the sun track. And if I got this card sitting on the intersection, I would choose the track I would move. Important, if due to an effect I gain two cards from the main board, I would still move only once. If you are in the last space of the track and you have to move, then you reset your marker to the initial space and gain a corresponding weather card in your hand. The empty card slot is immediately replenished. When you play weather cards, these are placed beneath a landscape card like this, and there can only be one weather card per landscape card. Apart from victory points, weather cards grant bonuses or actions which are performed right after you place the card. Some of these bonus actions are new, so let's check them out together. By performing this action, you take the corresponding ground token from the supply and place it on one of your ground cards. Now this card is treated as if it includes this ground type as well. Likewise, with this action, you take the corresponding token and add it on one of your observation cards. Now this card includes this symbol as well. This bonus makes the victory point value of the weather card to be equal to the victory point value of the landscape card it is attached. When you play this card, you immediately move your rain and sun markers by one space. Finally, this one is a placement requirement. You can only place this card on a landscape card that does not have a discovery card yet. After you place the card, no discovery card can be placed on this landscape. You can play this weather card just like a discovery card to indicate this. The effect of playing a path token on a book notch is exactly the same as in the base game. You perform the action on the path token and you may fulfill one goal. Goal tokens form pairs in the middle of the book. If after you place a path token you have the symbols of such a pair visible in your meadow and or surroundings area, then you place your lowest value bonus token to the leftmost empty space of the corresponding track. Remember, in this hike you have four bonus tokens so you can fulfill all goals once. All hikes also have one common space in the book that may accommodate any number of path tokens. The effects of placing a path token there varies depending on the hike. In this hike, the effect is to place one card in your meadow or surroundings area and you may also fulfill a goal. All hikes in Meadow Adventure Book last for six rounds regardless of the player count and after the third round, you replace the south deck holder with a north deck holder and discard all cards from the main board and refill it with new cards as normal. When the game ends, players calculate their score as normal and in this hike, they also add the victory point value of their markers in the weather tracks. For example, the red player will score another 3 points. The player with the most victory points wins and if there is a tie, all tied players share their victory. If you play in hiking mode, then apart from the stars awarded for the first 2 places, you can also accomplish the following 2 achievements. You gain one star if you have at least one of your bonus markers in the first space of a goal track. Here, the blue and the yellow players will gain one star. You also gain one star if you have played at least one sunny and one rainy card in your tableau. Hike 2 – Bridges In hike bridges, players split their meadow and surroundings areas between the two sides of a bridge. Open the book in the appropriate page, attach the notches and place the round marker on the first footbridge space. Display the five special hike cards next to the book. Shuffle all gold tokens and place them to the designated spaces. Return excess tokens in the box. Players take all basic components and also one stream board. 
Then players take a random bridge token of each color and place them on the corresponding colored space of their stream board facing upwards. Excess bridge tokens will not be used. In the end of setup and after players have taken their initial cards from the main board, they will have two ground cards in their hand, one starting card and one from the E deck. Players will start with both of these cards in their meadow. One however will have to be played on the left side of the bridge and the other on the right side. The player chooses. The player that last crossed the bridge by foot receives the first player token. In this hike, simply imagine you have two separate meadows. Whenever you play a ground card, you must decide on which side of the bridge you will play it. You still have 10 ground slots in total, but you don't have to divide them equally. Likewise, your surroundings area is split in two. When you play a landscape card, you must decide on which side it will be played. When you gain road tokens, these are placed above your bridge in your personal supply you will not need to decide the side they will be used in advance. Bridge tokens depict pairs of symbols, one on the left and one on the right side of the tile. Whenever you add a symbol in your meadow, check these pairs. If any of these pair symbols are visible at the same time in the corresponding sides of your split meadow, you immediately flip the corresponding tile. After you flip the second tile, you immediately gain one of the available special hike cards next to the book. Important, you don't have to flip bridge tiles in order. When you play a path token in the notches, you perform the action on the tile and you may fulfill a goal. Goal tokens come in pairs as I show you in the graphics having an illustration of a bridge in the middle. Assuming the bridge symbol is the player's bridge, the symbols must be visible in the player's meadow and surroundings areas on the corresponding side. So for example, to achieve this gold pair, the flower must be visible on the left side of my bridge and the wolf on the right side. To achieve this pair, the wolf must be visible on the left side of my bridge and the mushroom on the right side. If you fulfill the goal, you place your lowest bonus marker in an empty space of the area. Important, you can only have one bonus token in each such area. When you play a path token in the common space on the book, you may play one card and you may also fulfill a goal. The game progresses as normal and at the end of the sixth round you score victory points in the following way. You calculate your scoring separately for cards that are played on each side of the bridge and keep the lowest score only. Then you add to the score your placed bonus markers and the victory points from your flipped bridge tiles. If you play in hiking mode, the achievements of gaining additional stars are the following. You gain one star if you have placed at least two of your bonus tokens. And you also gain one star if you have all of these symbols visible in your meadow area at the end of the hike. Hike 3. Windmills. In this hike, players are hiking across the tulip fields, trying to rotate their windmills to gain victory points and extra bonuses. Open the book in the appropriate page, attach the notches and place the round marker on the first tulip space on the round track. Each player places the windmill disc on the corresponding windmill area and attaches the four windmill blades. Then the disc must be rotated so that the zero value is visible through this little hole. There are also five special hike cards for this hike, place them next to the board face up. Then distinguish all trail tokens to the three types, start, middle and end trails. Start tokens depict a signpost, end trails depict a flag and middle trails depict a number. After you shuffle each group of trails individually, each player is randomly dealt one start, three middle and one end trail. Using these tokens, players create a single trail, placing the tiles in order, with the three middle trails placed in an ascending order from left to right. In this hike, players will also use the player marker of their color, placing it on the signpost space of the trail just created. Players also take the rest of their components from the base game and they will place their initial ground card above their leftmost trail token as far to the left as possible. The player that last gave flowers to someone will take the first turn. 
In this hike, you always play new ground cards in a sequence from left to right above a trail token. Note that every trail token hosts two ground card slots. Trail tokens also depict meadow symbols forming a track for your player marker to move. Whenever you play a card in your meadow, this will be played in a column above one of your trail tokens. If the symbol on the new played card also appears on this specific trail, then you may move your player token to that exact space. Important, your marker can only be moved to the right and never to the left. Also, if you gain a special action to play two cards, you will move your player marker once even if the placements would normally allow you to move twice. So if I could play another card and I played it here, I would not be able to move again because I moved the pawn in the first placement. I could however choose to move my marker with my second placement and move my marker straight to this space. Whenever your player marker moves, you rotate your windmill to the next space. You always rotate once regardless how many trail spaces were skipped from the movement. If your marker reaches the last space of the trail, then you can no longer move it. Your windmill also has four blades depicting bonus actions. Whenever your marker passes from one trail token to another, you choose one of the blades, perform the bonus immediately and then you flip the blade to the other side. Only one of the blades will be flipped even if you pass through multiple trail tokens in one move. Blade bonus actions are similar to regular bonuses in the base game. However, with this one in particular, you gain one of the special high cards next to the book. In this hike, there are no gold tokens. Placing a path token in one of the book's notches, you only trigger the action depicted on the token. And using the common space only enables you to play one card from your hand. When the game ends, you calculate your score as normal and you add to that score the value visible through the hole of your windmill. In hiking mode, you gain a star if during the game you have two fence symbols visible at the same time in your tableau. You also gain a star if you manage to play one of the special hike cards. Hike 4 Balloons In this hike, players fly in a hot air balloon. They will be observing the compass to fulfill goals and timely land their balloon to gain extra actions. Open the book in the appropriate page, attach the book notches according to your player count and place the round marker on the topmost balloon of the round track. Place the compass rows on the book so that the dot depicted here points the north. Shuffle the gold tokens and place three of them in the designated spaces here. The rest of the tokens will not be used. The book depicts two balloon flight tracks. Players use the extra player marker and place it in the starting space of the left track depending on the player count. On the second space if it's a four players game or the bottommost space in all other cases. Next, take the balloon tokens and create one set for each player in the game. Each set should include six tokens marked with letters A to F. If there are tokens remaining, return them to the box. Players take all their components from the base game as well as one of the balloon sets which they place in their play area with a side depicting the letter facing upwards. The player who saw a hot air balloon most recently takes the starting player token. In this hike, when you place your path token in the book's notches, you perform the token's action but you may also fulfill a goal and or fly in the balloon. To see if you are eligible to fulfill a goal, you must check the compass rows. The position of the compass creates pairs of symbols as I show you here with graphics. Each pair also corresponds to one of the balloon tokens which players receive during setup. So this pair corresponds to the A balloon token, this pair corresponds to token B and so on and so forth. If the player has a pair of symbols visible in their play area, as well as the corresponding balloon token available with the letters showing, then the player flips the balloon token and will score that many points during scoring. Make note that as the compass will be rotated, the required pairs will change as well, but you know what to expect by consulting this diagram. 
When you fly the balloon, you move your player pawn 0 to 2 steps upwards depending on the path token you played and the values on this window of the compass. If you play the path token with the same number as the large number in the middle of the window, you gain 2 steps. If the number matches the smaller numbers, you only move once. If your number is not depicted in the window, you cannot move. If you played the token with a question mark, then it depends on which action you chose to copy. So, if I played this path token to play two cards, then I have played a four, and based on the compass, I am eligible to move two steps on the balloon track. As you move upwards on the left balloon track, you will be reaching spaces that indicate action bonuses. These are similar to action bonuses in the base game, and you may pause the video now to check them out. Important, you never trigger these bonuses when you reach them. These bonuses are triggered when you do a stopover. When you gain steps in the balloon track, you can also do a stopover. You can do a stopover before your first step or after any of your steps. When you do a stopover, you trigger all bonuses reached so far in the first balloon track and then you move your pawn in the starting space of the second balloon track. If you still have more steps to take, you perform them in the new track. You will only stop over once in the entire hike. So in this example that I gained two steps, I can choose to do one of the steps at first, then do a stopover triggering all of these bonuses in any order, then move my marker to the second track and perform my last step starting from there. As you move upwards on the right balloon track, once you reach this space, you will place your two-value bonus token on one of the balloon spaces. When you reach this space, you place your three-value token, and when you reach that space, you place your four-value token. This placement happens immediately when you reach the space. When you use the common space on the book, you may play one card, you may fulfill a goal, and you also fly the balloon for one step only. At the end of every round, the compass is rotated by 90 degrees. The direction of rotation is determined by the current position of the player or players who is higher on the balloon tracks. Every step on these tracks indicates a clockwise or anticlockwise direction. Based in our example, the compass should be turned 90 degrees clockwise. When the hike ends, players gain points from their played cards and bonus markers but also they gain points depicted on their flipped balloon tokens. In hiking mode, you gain a star if you reach the top space of any balloon track and another star if you manage to flip all your six balloon tokens. Hike 5 Observation Tower In this hike, players will try to create big columns of cards in their meadow area to climb higher in the observation tower and examine nature with their binoculars. Open the book in the appropriate page, attach the required notches and place the round marker in the bottom space of the mini tower round track. Take the horizon tiles and separate them based on their value. 1, 3 and 5 points. Place all one value tiles on this space of the tower in the first floor. Then shuffle the other two types and create two face down stacks next to the book. Place two random 3-value tiles on the 3rd floor and two 5-value tiles on the 6th floor. Take all gold tokens and randomly use 6 of them on the designated spaces of the 2nd, 3rd and 4th floors. Remaining tokens will not be used. This hike comes with 12 special hike cards. Shuffle them and create a face-down stack next to the book. Then flip the top 4 cards face up. You will also need the six special path tokens. Simply place them next to the book. Players get their starting components from the base game, but also a set of five tower player tokens and the player marker of their color. The player who used binoculars most recently gains the first player token for the first round. In this hike, at the beginning of all rounds except on the first, players must do the following. All players select one of the card columns in their meadow area and place one of their tower tokens beneath it. Important, the selected column must not already contain a tower token. These tokens will remain until the end of the hike, so I will not be able to select this column again.
Then players count the cards in the column where they placed the token and place their player marker to the corresponding floor in the observation tower. Every floor offers specific binocular actions. We will see how players can use them in a bit. Then you shuffle all special path tokens and flip tokens equal to the players. Then, in player turn order, each player takes one of the available path tokens and discards one of their own tokens for the duration of the round. After players place their marker in the tower and take a special path token, the round starts. Special path tokens are used as normal tokens but grant more actions, most of which are already known from the base game. For example, if I place this token here, I can take any two cards from the selected row, refilling the board after I select both of the cards, and then I will also play one of my cards. The most important feature of these tokens, however, is the binocular symbol, which gives you access to the actions of the observation tower. When you place your token in a book notch, you perform the action depicted on the tile as normal. So if I place this token in a book notch, I get two binocular actions. You may select actions in the tower up to the level of your player marker, but when you gain multiple actions, you must select different ones. The first floor offers a binocular action with all common actions from the normal path tokens. Play two cards, take any card from the main board, take two roads, etc. So I could spend an action to gain two roads, but I cannot spend a second binocular action to play two cards because it's still the same binocular action. If you perform any of these three binocular actions, you gain one of the horizon tiles there. If you take a tile from the third or the sixth floor, you must immediately replenish the empty slot with a new tile from the supply. After you gain horizon tiles, you place them in your surroundings area. These require no road nor any card to be attached to in order to be played. These tiles will grant you the depicted amount of victory points provided that the corresponding symbols on the tiles are visible in your tableau at the end of the game. If not, you gain the lower value indicated by the smaller icons. One value tiles have no requirements. By performing any of these three binocular actions, you can fulfill a goal. If the indicated pair of symbols appears in your tableau, you immediately place the bonus token of the value depicted in the specific binocular action in one of the slots. Finally, with this binocular action, you gain one of the face-up special height cards next to the board and flip a new card afterwards. And with this action, you gain two of these cards, refilling the spots after you take both cards. When you play a path token in the common space, you simply play one card from your hand. At the end of each round, players return their special path token to the common supply, as well as the path token they discarded back to their personal supply. In final scoring, players will gain points from their played cards and bonus tokens, as well as from their horizon tiles. In addition, players gain one more point for every card above 6 in a meadow column. So, in this example, for this column I would gain two additional points. Also players score an additional three victory points if they manage to place all their three bonus tokens. In hiking mode, players also gain a star by placing all of their three bonus tokens. You also gain a star if you manage to create a meadow column with at least seven cards. Hike 6, the cave. Finally, players reach the cave entrance. Players continue their adventure underground where they will examine cave paintings and encounter a strange plant and animal species. After you open the book in the cave page and attach the appropriate book notches, place the round marker in the top mineral space of the round track. Shuffle all gold tokens from the base game and place 8 of them in the designated spaces on the book. Return the rest to the box. Next, take the cave painting tokens. These depict five different designs. You need to create sets of them equal to the number of players. In a three-player example, you will need three such sets. Every set should contain one tile of each design. In a four-player game, you simply use all of the tiles. If there are any excess tiles, these are placed back in the box. After you shuffle all applicable tiles, use them to randomly cover the appropriate spaces on the book based on the player count. 
In our three-player example, we will cover all spaces except on the spaces applicable to a four-player game. This hike comes with four special cave hike discovery cards with this back illustration, which should be placed next to the book facing upwards, but there are also another 32 special hike cards that must be mixed to the basic decks. After you separate these cards by type, do the following. Take the corresponding basic deck and roughly divide it in half. Shuffle the new cards to one of the halves and then place this half on top of the other half. Do the same for all other basic decks. Players take all their components from the basic game as well as the player marker of their color which is placed in the entrance cave space of the book. The player who held the shovel most recently takes the first player token and starts the game. When you place a token in the book notch, you perform the token's action as normal. In this hike, however, in addition to that, you can also take one painting tile from the book if the two symbols in the row and column of the selected painting appear in your personal tableau. Important, you cannot have more than one painting with the same design. After you gain a painting, you move your player marker to a connected area deeper into the cave. Keep in mind that you can only move towards the right and never backwards. All cave areas have special bonuses and actions which are triggered immediately. Most of these are pretty straightforward. If you reach or pass through this area, you will gain 3 victory points at the end of the game. And if you reach this final area, you will gain 6 points instead. When you reach this area, you immediately gain one of the four special cave observation cards next to the book. These four areas have a slot for a bonus marker. Important, you can only enter such an area if this slot is empty. After you enter, you get to place one of your own bonus markers. Which one depends on how many special high cards you have played in your tableau so far. With less than four cards played, you place the two value token. With five to six cards, you place the three value token and with seven or more cards, the four value token. When you play one of your path tokens in the common space, you play one card from your hand into your tableau and you also get a chance to get a painting tile from the book if you can satisfy the symbol requirements as normal. In the end of the hike, players count their score from their played cards, their played bonus marker and also plus 3 or plus 6 victory points if they reached this or this area respectively. In hiking mode, you gain a star if you manage to play a special cave discovery card. Also, a star will be awarded to the player who played the most additional hike cards in their tableau. In case of a tie, all tight players get the star. And that's everything you need to know for the new six scenarios of Meadow Adventure Book. If you like our videos and want to see more, please subscribe to our channel. Until next time, have fun and play more board games.